Hello everyone, welcome to the latest of these vlogs. I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who's been uh, watching them and uh, has made kind comments and suggestions that I'll be taking on board and we'll make it the best that we possibly can. Uh, please uh, don't forget to spread the word and ask people to search for our channel, Fenny Churches, or for particular uh, vlogs, uh, Vicar David Update and then The Date, which is the 27th of the 3rd uh, 20 today or whatever uh, the day is uh, please do continue to spread the word and as we meet together uh, in this way in this uh, this uncertain time um, but I think we can use this time uh, well. Bishop Philip has uh, been writing about how everyone we is missing uh, those who uh, we normally uh, come into contact with and especially those um, who we pray with and it Bishop Phillips also said that it's important to remember that when we do pray, we are lifted out of our ordinary um, circumstances and surroundings and joined together with all those who are praying and all those who have prayed in the past. And so I hope that in some small way, these vlogs will help us to do that, to uh, continue to pray together uh, until the time comes when we can all meet again uh, physically. Um, we'll meet together uh, in prayer. And so let us pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. words of the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Today's Bible reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, the story of the lost son. Jesus went on to say, There was once a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away, where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread over that country, and he was left without a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens of that country, who sent him out to his farm to take care of the pigs. He wished he could fill himself with the bean pods the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything to eat. At last he came to his senses and said, All my father's hired workers have more than they can eat, and here I am about to starve. I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. 
he was still a long way from home when his father saw him. His heart was filled with pity, and he ran, threw his arms round his son and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called his servants. Hurry, he said, bring the best robe and put it on him. Bring a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Then go and get the prize calf and kill it, and let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. And so the feasting began. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I remember in Wigan once I was asked to go and uh, visit a, a elderly person in hospital and I was asked to go because uh, this person didn't have uh, any visitors and I remember sitting reading with them and the look of um, thankfulness and expression that came upon uh, this person simply because it was some human contact and I think human contact and, and companionship is one of the most fundamental needs uh, of all of us and uh, no doubt we're all finding that especially so at this time. But whatever our circumstances um, at the moment, perhaps all of us have experienced a time of loneliness or isolation at some point in our lives. In the Psalms, Psalm 25, it says, turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. And loneliness is perhaps um, associated with um, perhaps uh, particular groups of people, amongst those maybe uh, the elderly. And um, I remember the, there's a marvellous statue uh, in Hope Street in Liverpool, not far from Liverpool Cathedral, where I was uh, ordained. Hope Street, by the way, being named Hope Street before the, the two cathedrals at the end of them. And the statue remembers one of the be best loved Beatles songs, Eleanor Rigby. And this is the statue. Somebody sat next to it. You're seeing it, uh, the, the writing uh, back to front because of the uh, tricks of the camera. But you can see the statue of Eleanor Rigby and those of you who know the song talk, know that it speaks of all the lonely people, um, an experience shared by many, all the lonely people. But it's not just older people like Eleanor Rigby who suffer through uh, loneliness. There's been a study that in the last decade uh, it's a greater problem amongst younger people aged between 18 to 34 than those considered um, elderly uh, classed as uh, somewhat unfairly, I have to say, in my case, over 55s. And um, it said that one in four of the people who call the Samaritans, one in four men of people who call the Samaritans, uh, mentions loneliness or isolation. Well, we know that in ordinary times, it's not grand gestures alone that um, can overcome loneliness or isolation. It's just simple things like a smile or a wave or a simple text or a phone call. And there are many things that we can still do at this time. Those uh, phone calls, texts, social media, uh, just a, an inquiry after people, letting people know that we're thinking of them, emails. And I said before, and before all this, this, this special time, but at any time, anybody, uh, please don't, never hesitate to call me um, or text or email if you think I can be a help. But it's something that we all uh, can do together to, to combat um, the loneliness and isolation that many people do experience and is perhaps being experienced by more than most and uh, perhaps more intensely uh, by some at this time. We can all play our part in in bringing our care and concern to others. So let us pray. Lord, we know that regardless of our lifestyle, we all feel lonely from one time or another. And we remember all those who are alone or who feel burdened with loneliness. And we ask for your comfort and in your love, let them know that they are not forgotten. Amen. In our Bible uh, reading it was perhaps at the time of that uh, the prodigal son the lost son the time that, that he was most alone the time that it is his lowest point when he was there uh, looking after the pigs that he realized his need his need of God and one of my favorite paintings that I have up in the um, 
in the vicarage uh, shows um, the prodigal son uh, being welcomed back by his father. And in this wonderful painting, um, of course, we see the way in which we ourselves are welcomed back into the loving arms of God. The father standing, of course, for the, for, for the loving father, the loving father of us all and the son for ourselves. So I'm going to put this uh, picture in front of the camera while we have a, a short time of music. time of prayer. After each of the sections of the prayers this day we 
after the words life-giving Lord, I just invite you to reply, hear us and help us. Lord, knowing the deep love that surrounds us and reaches out to us in whatever circumstances we may find ourselves, we bring all our burdens of care to you in the healing power of our Heavenly Father. And so we bring before you all our work and all our concerns. Bring particular people to mind to pray for today and in our own community and in any community, any parish all over the world. Life-giving Lord, hear us and help us. We bring before you people who lack communication, people who live in fear, a lack of understanding, those who feel insecure and those who maybe feel angry or vengeful. Life-giving Lord, hear us and help us. We bring before you each member of our own church, community and family and friends, neighbours and colleagues. And in each individual anxiety and sorrow, each hope and dream, each weakness and special need, we pray for your accepting love to be poured out upon them. Life-giving Lord, hear us and help us. We bring before you all whose lives are crippled by unrepented sin, those who build barriers or walls around them, those who refuse to forgive, those whose lives are restless or devoid of peace. Life-giving Lord, hear us and help us. As we remember today, all who are ill and continue to pray for those who suffer with the coronavirus. We give you thanks for all who care for them, all who work in the NHS, all who have volunteered. So we pray that you will surround us all with your love and your care. Life-giving Lord, hear us and help us. And we bring before you all who have died, those who miss them, those who are bereaved, we pray that you will deepen in us the faith that you give us in the resurrection to eternal life. Life-giving Lord, hear us and help us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So we end our time of prayer by joining together to pray in the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Grant we beseech. You merciful Lord, to all your faithful people, pardon and peace, that we all may be cleansed from our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love, who you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you very much everyone for watching. Um, please remember to, um, to like, uh, to give a big thumbs up uh, to the to the vlog uh, to subscribe to our channel Fanny Churches and to spread the world spread the word and um, I look forward to uh, sharing the next vlog with you uh, tomorrow so take care keep safe and God bless.